question now is that Clause 4 stand part. Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Member Sue Moroni. I thank you Mr Chair. I do want to make a contribution on this clause because it is the purpose of the bill that we um, are about to debate and I hope that members will stick to that. Um, and also I want to take a call because I think that those watching may be a little tired of the moralising and the judgments, um, the sort of judgmental type calls that are coming from the National Party about you know what good parenting is or what good parenting isn't. And, um, um, and I think I'd rather bring the debate back to uh, making sure that there are choices for all families and for having um, opportunity and choice, because that's what this bill um, it, it is about, Mr Sabin. It's actually about choices for families. It's not about requiring families to take paid parental leave. It's not requiring families to have one of the parents um, in paid employment. But the reality is that for most families these days, unless um, they are very, very wealthy, actually. For most families, there is a need for both parents to be in paid employment. And that's, you know, there are a range of other things that we need to maybe address in um, our society. Uh, we need higher wages, for example. That would be a good outcome, wouldn't it, if we actually got the National Party to agree that higher wages um, was something that would be good to um, resolve this issue. But no, they're spending their time actually making judgmental type contributions about parenting and what makes good parenting and what doesn't. This bill is about choices. It's about choices for families. It's about the ability for this country as a collective, as a collective society, to actually say, we want to invest in the future of our society. That investing in children is a priority, and certainly within the Labour Party, that's what, that's what we believe that investing in children is a priority because we want the best well-rounded citizens of this country because we know that that will give actually the brighter future that the National Party used to talk about. They've stopped it now, but they once talked about a brighter future. And, and actually this bill is a practical measure to bring about that bright, brighter future that the National Party once believed in. It's very sad to see um, and hear the, the National Party speeches because I think that people will hear them protesting far too loudly, far too loudly that they do really actually quite like children. Of course they like children, but if they really wanted to prioritise families and children, then they would be supporting this bill. They wouldn't be speaking to try and stop it from having its vote. And I agree with Tracy Martin. If the government really was going to be honest and authentic in its debate about this bill, it would stop the silly nonsense of this filibuster, it would let the bill um, pass, and then use its financial veto. If they really believed they had a justified case for saying it was unaffordable, then use the financial veto. That's what it's there for. I firmly believe that the government has done this, has gone through all these twists and turns to not use the financial veto because they know that there isn't the financial justification for using it. They know that in their hearts of hearts and that's why they won't go down that track. I want to remind some of the speakers who have spoken on the previous clauses that um, the bill does have public support. Mr Bakado, we know that because 96.4% of the submitters on this bill, and there were 3,800 of them. It's not a mandate. It's not a mandate, says Mr Mankado. He's just running down the whole system of democracy in this country. The select committee process brought forward about 3,809, I think, submitters. 96.4% uh, of them agreed with this bill, as did uh, a poll not done by a political party, done by, um, actually, I think, one of the TV channels of 1,000 people that showed that even when put, the question was put to them that it was going to cost $500 million, which it's not, by the way, um, even then, with that amount of money being put into that loaded question, 63% of New Zealanders said they wanted it. So this bill, I know the National Party doesn't want to hear this, but it does have wide public support in New Zealand. It has parliamentary support. The only thing standing between families and 26 weeks paid parental leave is the National Party. I call the Honourable Member Young Jin. Ni hao ma. Now, Mr Chair, I rise to take a call.